Hi friends, my name is Chris. For those of you who don't know me, welcome to Chris with Book Club. Thank you for joining me again. I know I've been a wall as usual, um, but I'm back, I'm here, ready to make videos for you guys. And um, thank you for joining me. To all my new subscribers, hello. Um, I really appreciate you guys for clicking subscribe. If you haven't already, click that little bad boy down below. Um, and I promise you, uh, you'll get more videos of me talking absolute nonsense about books. Um, what do I need to say to you guys? To everyone who has been messaging me, um, asking me where I am and saying, get more videos up, we miss you, all that sort of stuff. <laughs> I really, really appreciate it. And that is exactly why I'm here. Um, and I promise to devote more time to making this channel have many more videos and better content. So in saying that, let's start. I am going to give you a video of five books that I have read this year so far and five books that I am really, really excited about reading as well. Let's get started. So the first book that I picked up this year was The Lost Continent, Travels in Small Town America by Bill Bryson. Now, I've never read a Bill Bryson book in my life. I don't even really know who he is. Um, I never even really read travel books that much, and which is kind of mad because I absolutely love to travel. Um, but I actually picked this book up um, before Christmas when I was Christmas shopping in Camden, and I found this cute little bookshop. Found it, I was like, this sounds good because I'm uh, I'm American and I've got an American passport sorted, and I want to go back to move into America. That was my plan before, before, well, before. You know, you know exactly what I'm about to say. Um, so I thought this would get me in the mood, get me excited, all that kind of stuff, ready to hopefully go to America this year at some point. Now, I started off with good intentions, good hopes for the book. Um, however, it kind of fell flat for me. Look, it does exactly what it says in the tin. He travels to small towns in America, describes them, describes how he feels about them, and then kind of moves on. He generally doesn't like a lot of the towns, to be quite honest. There was moments that it was quite funny, but mostly he was just negative about America. I don't know if there's any, um, if there's a, he's got a leg to stand on with it. Um, but yeah, it kind of got repetitive. By the end of the book, I was like, cool, I'm ready to move on. Um, I bet there are a million better travel books out there. If you have any recommendations, please leave them below because I actually think I would love to read some. Um, but this guy is only going to get 2.5 stars from me. I wouldn't recommend it. There might be better, even Bill Bryson books out there. I wouldn't say this is the one. Cool. Uh, from there. Oh, I also forgot to give you a disclaimer. I don't have any of the books really with me. I have a couple here, but they're all kind of packed away just now in a suitcase just because... I'm moving about from place to place at the moment, so I don't have my fabulous bookshelf with me, um, hence why I'm gonna to point to lots of photos instead. Cool, from there, I picked up Valentine by Elizabeth Wetmore. And thank God that I did, because it was fantastic. I loved it, it is a debut novel. I th Wait, is it a debut novel? <laughs> it is. The very definition of a stunning debut is a debut novel. Um, it's set in the 1970s in Texas during the oil boom. It starts off basically, this is not giving away the plot, even this is, let's see what happens right at the start, but a Mexican girl is raped and attacked very badly. And it's basically um, a, a kind of point of view telling of different women in the town and how they react to this situation. Um, very reminiscent, I would say, of To Kill a Mockingbird a little bit. It definitely gave me those vibes. To Kill a Mockingbird is one of my absolute favourite books. I cannot wait to reread it again and post it for you guys. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how I felt about it when I started reading it. Um, I'm also not a massive fan of point of different point of view kind of books. The moment you give me like four or five characters to read different points of view from, I can't keep up with them, I kind of lose interest, I get annoyed because I want to stick with one character and I have to move to the next. However, I did not find that with this book, which is good. Um, yeah, you know, it's a story that tackles things about race, about gender, about grief, um, you know, that the story of, of a woman's struggle to be heard in a man's world, which is a very a topic that we hear about a million times a year because of course we fucking do. Um, and yeah, I would just, it's 
was brilliant. It grabbed me. I never lost interest. I think it even made me tear up at some points. Um, totally recommend. I just didn't get enough at the end for some reason. I just thought it was going to give me something more at the end, which it didn't, which is fine. Um, so in saying that, I'm going to give it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. But I would totally recommend, if you haven't read it already, pick it up. I don't think it will disappoint you. From there, whoo, I got my first five star book of the year, The Mountains Sing by, I've listened to this name a million times, I'm still getting it wrong, but it's beautiful, I apologise in advance, um, Nguyen Pan Kimai, it's not, that's not even it, but I've listened to it a million times, but The Mountains Sing. This is absolutely one of the best historical fiction books I've ever read. I'm a massive historical fiction fan. I am not a fan of reading about kings and queens of England, like, bore me later. But this is set in Vietnam, um, spanning from the 1920s to the 1980s. Set with the backdrop of the Vietnam War, we're looking at a grandmother and her daughter, these two points of view, uh, and kind of what happens to their family um, from the years 1920s right up to 1980s. For a book that spans over such a huge epic scale of time, it also feels so intimate. Like, I was weeping at this book. The writing is gorgeous. I cared so deeply for the grandmother in this book, the mother in this book, the 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 child, the grandchild in this book. Um, also, I, I, I've been to Vietnam, I've been to Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh, Saigon, all this kind of stuff. So I kind of was, I felt like I could picture myself being here as I was reading it. Um, I just honestly think this is brilliant. I would, I want to read it again for sure. Um, I totally think anyone out there should read it. I totally recommend five stars, pick it up, give it a go. From there, I listened to Ready Player One by Ernest Klein, a book that has been recommended to me many times because of my love of the 80s and Star Wars and all the nerdy things. Um, look, I watched the movie a while ago and I remember feeling like I wasn't that into it. But I thought maybe the book would be a lot better, which I'm sure lots of you guys will say it is. Um, I don't know if it's some sort of disconnect that I have with audiobooks in particular, because every single audiobook that I listen to, when I'm not also reading it at the same time in front of me, I tend to not enjoy. And this book was no different. I just kind of got bored. I love, love, love the nostalgia of it, the, the references to all the things that I know about. I loved that. I just kind of was a bit bored and kind of knew what was going to happen and like they're searching for keys and all that sort of thing and I just didn't love it but I know that so many people do I know why people would love it it's I feel like it's a total cult classic now and um, I just kind of wasn't for me and I do think it's mostly because of an it was the audiobook and I wasn't fully invested in listening to it properly and I was going a walk I was doing the dishes and trying to listen to it and I was like mm. Take it or leave it. Sorry. I would say, again, 2.5 stars from me out of five. Um, but I do know that people love it. And I I, sh I feel like I should love it. I, I, I feel like I'm the perfect candidate to love it. But I just didn't. Sorry. Then, finally, the fifth book. The Prophets by Robert Jones Jr. I actually haven't finished this yet. However, first of all, let's just talk about the cover. We all know, don't judge a book by its cover, but I mean, we all still do. Gorgeous cover, gorgeous colours. It sits so well on my bedside table at night. It just goes with all the colours of the room, you know. Uh, uh, yeah, this so far is brilliant. I'm taking it quite slowly because I kind of want to really take it all in. And it's another book that skips from lots of points of views. So... And I'm not not enjoying it again, which is good, which is a good sign. However, I'm just kind of digesting it quite slowly um, because I feel like I don't want to miss anything. Um, this is a story set in the Deep South. 
um, with two enslaved men um, who are in, in love with each other, who are in an intimate relationship with one another. Um, on the steep plantation, all they have is really is each other that keep them, keep them sane in this kind of harsh, terrible world that they find themselves in. Um, and basically is about a betrayal, something that happens to them and all the people around them and how, what happens. I, I want to say that without giving it away. Um, writing wise, stellar. Um, I know, I know, I know that I'm going to cry at it probably. Um, I'm seeing it everywhere on Instagram just now and, and, and booktube and stuff like that. I feel like it's going to be a five star kind of book again. So if you want to get invested in it, please pick it up. I don't think it's going to disappoint you. Um, I can already like, I can already see the Netflix or, you know, the HBO series about it. So that's why I would say pick it up. Cool. From there, I'm going to give you five books that I am looking forward to reading. I think I'm finding the more books I'm interested in reading. Lots of them are actually debut novels or novels that are from that are, that are new, new literary fiction um, or historical fiction. That's kind of my vibe of think of where I'm going at the moment. There are still a couple of books that I absolutely want to read that are from a couple of years ago that I'm just missing out. Um, but I'm just going to give you five. I'm going to try and give you five. I'll try. Um, so the first book that I want to read is another historical fiction book, is The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna. It is just out this month, or last month, it'll be in February. Um, yes, I haven't read any of Kristen Hanna's work yet. I haven't read The Nightingale, even though I absolutely really, really, really want to. And I also haven't read The Great Alone, even though it was on my TBR list last year that I was desperate to read and didn't. I've heard that she is an amazing author. Um, I've heard that this book you need to get your tissues out because you're going to cry. I always feel like I take on, I always feel like I take on like that as a challenge whenever like another booktuber is like saying, this is going to make you cry. I'm like, challenge accepted because I, I love to cry. Um, but then I always feel like the, the books that I, they say I'm definitely going to cry at, I never do. And then I'm just totally caught off guard by something like The Mountain Sing, for instance. And I'm like, this is great. Um, the Four Winds, you're set basically during the Great Depression. Um, I think it's Texas, but it might not be Texas. It's somewhere in the South um, and set in the kind of the Depression, the Great Depression. And basically this woman has to make a choice um, whether or not she like stays in the South where her home is to try and salvage the life that she has there or whether her and her family are going to move West to California to seek a new life. Um, very uh, of the themes of like what it means to be American and the American dream. Again, you know, totally interested in it. Um, yeah, I've heard it's, it's really great. I've heard that Kristen Hanna is an amazing author uh, and someone that will not disappoint you. Um, so I'm, I've been looking forward to reading it for a while. So I definitely think it's going to be one of the next ones that I read next. Second book that I have heard about and really, really want to get on board with is The Death of the Vec OG by Akweke Ameze. Um, first of all, the cover of this again. Oh, so good. It's such an error. People must laugh at me. Oh, well. Yeah, The Death uh, of Vivek OG. Um, I saw no Noelle Gallagher uh, recommend this and I love her videos and trust everything that she says. Um, yeah, and it said she made her cry. It made her cry, so I've taken up the challenge. Um, yes, as far as I'm aware, I don't know fully the ins and outs of the story. Um, I've got a description here that I just stole. It says, one afternoon in a town in southeastern Nigeria, a mother opens her front door to discover her son's body wrapped in colourful fabric at her feet. What follows is a tumultuous, heart-wrenching story of one family's struggle to understand a child whose spirit is both gentle and mysterious. A dramatic story of loss and transcendence that will move every reader. I mean, I'm sold. You know what I'm saying? Um... I hope it's another five-star book. That sounds like it definitely is going to be. Um, so that is next on the list. Another one that I am absolutely desperate to read, I was supposed to read last year, but I didn't because I ran out of time, is Shuggy Bane by Douglas Stewart. It won the Pulitzer Prize last year for Best Fiction. Uh, 
it's set in Glasgow, where I'm from. Um, yeah, set in the 1980s during a Thatcher era um, in, in working class Glasgow. Basically about um, this family, a mother who is left by her husband and how she deals with that. Not very well. Apparently, I think she's an alcoholic and all these sorts of things. And the only rock that she has is her son, Shuggy, um, who is described as a queer, a queer child. Pardon me. I just burped. I always burp. There it is. I think it's like my signature move is just a burp on this, on these videos. Um, yeah. So yeah, he's a queer kid, and I don't really know much else from that. I just know that everyone is loving it. People cry again. I think that's just my aim this year is just to cry because I, I haven't cried enough during this pandemic. But that is absolutely on the list. Again, I just want I just want some good freaking literature, do you know what I mean? Uh, so hopefully that does the trick. How many have I given you? One, two, three. Okay, I've got to give you two more. What are the other ones that I wrote down that I am definitely, definitely interested in? Ah yes, Clara and the Sun by Kazuo Ishiguro. Um, yeah, I have seen this everywhere, posted everywhere on Bookstagram and on Booktube. Uh, the cover looks great. I'm totally loving the minimalist vibes. Um, yeah, Clara and the Sun basically, I think, is something to do about uh, this person, Clara, who is an artificial friend. Um, and kind of like, do you know what? I'm going to read my notes because it just saves us both time. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, it tells the story of Clara, an artificial friend with outstanding observational qualities who, from her place in the store, watches carefully the behaviour of those who come in to browse and of those who pass the street outside. She remains hopeful that a customer will soon chase her. It is a thrilling book that offers a look at the, our changing world through the eyes of an unforgettable narrator and one that explores the fundamental question, what does it mean to love? Now, I'm a bit of a technophobe. I don't know if you can tell from the the quality of these uh, YouTube videos. Um, so things like artificial intelligence and all the stuff that the world is rapidly changing with um, kind of freaks me out. But I think to read something like that and to read that from a point of view of um, art an artificial intelligence or art... <laughs> and just like that, I proved my point because my video just cut off randomly for some reason. So... I am a technophobe and I'm just gonna have to deal with it. Uh, what I was saying was that to read maybe uh, from the narration of an artificial intelligence friend or something like that sounds great. I've never ever read something like that before. So I'm gonna read it. Uh, yeah, cool. Then my final book that I want to read, so I've just closed my laptop, so it'll take me a while to open it, uh, is Pew by Catherine Lacey. I actually saw this on another booktubers uh, YouTube and thought this sounds great. Um, basically set in small town America, again, which is, we, we know I love it. Um, in the American South, a, ch a church congregation arrives to service and find a figure asleep on a pew. The person is genderless, racially ambiguous, and refuses to speak. One family takes the stranger, uh, the strange visitor in and nicknames him Pew. A foreboding, provocative, and, oh God, I don't even know how to say that. Amorphous, amorphous, amorphous fable about the world today. Wow, I'm a fraud. Uh, it's contradictions, it's flimsy morality and the limits of judging others based on their appearance. Sounds great. I mean, I could also list you a million other ones. I want to read Malibu Rising. I want to read the new Nick uh, book, which is um, about Nick Carraway from The Great Gatsby and his life before, the kind of like origin story of it that's coming out this year. Uh, I want to read... I want to read the new Stephen King novel later. Uh, which is coming out later this year. I want to read A Promised Land and Becoming by the Obamas because it's been on my list for ages and I suppose it's amazing. Um, I also want to read China by Edward Rutherford, if you've heard of that, or him as well. I've never read any of his works, but it sounds amazing and China is scary and I'm totally intrigued by it, but also terrified by it, so it sounds great. And I'm going to leave it there, otherwise I could go on for ages and then you'll get bored and then you won't come back. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching me. I'm so glad to be back. I promise you I will bring you much more content. 
um, in the weeks and months going forward. If you have anything you want to see me doing or reading, leave it below, leave a comment, leave your love, click subscribe if you want to do that too. Check out my bookstagram as well. I'm going to give it a revamp, start changing it up a bit um, so you can see a bit more of me and connect with me. Uh, what else do I have to say? That's probably it. Keep reading, keep thinking, keep feeling. I will see you guys soon. From me and my two spots that arrived just in time for this video, good night. <laughs>